हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल स्टैट्स एंड फिजिक्स कॉन्सेप्ट्स बाय मिस्टर हेमंत सो दिस इज़ आवर एट्थ लेक्चर इन फिजिक्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मोशन ऑफ अ व्हीकल ऑन एन इनक्लाइंट प्लेन सो विल सी इन दिस लेक्चर दैट व्हाट ऑल आर द फोर्सेस व्हिच एक्ट ऑन अ बॉडी व्हेन it moves on an inclined plane so let us uh, start with this so before starting uh, let me tell you about my uh, channel uh, our channel is uh, stats and physics concepts by mr hemant so we are covering some uh, important uh, topics in all these lectures and even in previous lectures i have covered some topics on uh, uh relative velocity projectile motion and uh, like equation of motion so we started with uh, very basic concepts and uh, we are moving on to slowly we'll move towards uh, some complex uh, problems and we'll see how we can analyze them this is my email id stats5. hemant at the rate gmail dot com. So if you have any doubt regarding the topics that we cover, uh, we'll appreciate if you can approach us at our this email ID. Okay, so let us uh, start with this lecture. So this is an inclined plane. Let us say a road elevated at some angle theta, and let us say this is our car. This is our car, and it is going in a circular path on a road which is inclined at some angle with respect to the ground. So this is our ground. So we'll now we have to find out. what may be v max or the maximum velocity with which this car can take a turn on a circular road so this is a common observation observation uh, you might have observed when you are going by a train or by uh, a car you might have seen that uh, the rail tracks they are uh, little bit tilted when the trains they take a turn so this is done to prevent uh, one is uh, derailing of the trains when they move at certain speed uh, and take a circular turn and also to reduce the wear and tear of the wheels so we'll see how all these forces act on a body so let us say this car it has a mass m so like right here let us say mass of car is m kg in kilogram v max it is the maximum velocity with which the car can take turn on a banked so the surface is a banked surface take turn on a banked circular road so let us see what all are the forces act on this side one is the same g so the force due to gravitation it will always act perpendicular to the ground this ground it will always act perpendicular to the ground there will be some normal reaction on this car due to this inclined surface so if the surface if the object is lying over here in that case the normal reaction will be like this and mg will be acting downward but in this case where the surface is surface is inclined so we'll take a perpendicular to this surface 
so that perpendicular will be always be n so what we call this n n is the normal reaction due to surface on which car is present so this is n so this is the normal reaction now what will be this angle when this angle will be theta now you may ask me or a question may arise in your mind that how this is theta you can look at this uh, earlier to this surface this was the perpendicular so when you have tilted this plane by an amount theta what happens to this perpendicular you can see this this perpendicular also gets shifted by theta angle so if i bring this plane back here again this point back here so again this will coincide with this so this is a very important thing you have to remember whenever you tilt a plane by some angle theta that will be the angle between the initial surface angle between the perpendicular and the initial surface and the angle between the perpendicular now to the surface again this will be theta vertically opposite angle there will be some force of friction acting between the tires of vehicle and the surface and that force of friction is let me call this as fs so fs is the static force of friction so force of friction between the car tires and the surface that is fs now this fs again it has two components one is this component and other is this component so how much this angle will be theta again so this is theta this is theta because this is parallel to this alternate angles so i want to find out this component as well as this component so i want this component also so i'll draw up parallel here component so i'll draw parallel vector here so that i can find out this component now you want to find out this so i'll use cos theta so cos theta is this upon this so let me take this as o this as p and this point as q so i can draw here so that you can understand so this is o p q and i am saying this is f s so what will be o p so i'll use cos theta so what is o p o p is f s cos theta so or this component which is acting inward that is f s cos theta what about this component this one which is acting vertically downward so again i'll use sin theta here so sin theta is pq upon fs so pq is this pq is fs sin theta so pq is equal to f s sin theta this we get so what are the forces acting 
inward one is this fs cos theta the one which is acting vertically downward this component so this is fs sin theta fs sin theta what about this component now this is an normal reaction to on this car i have to find out now there is one more component of this n you can see n is resultant of these two components one is this horizontal and other is this vertical so i can draw a vector here parallel to this so whenever you have to find out suppose i want to find out this thing this vector so what i'll do i'll draw a perpendicular from here so i'll get this so again if i draw a figure here let me take this as uh, uh, m this as l so this is theta this is m this is l this is n so again sin theta will be this component is n so sin theta will be this by this so this component is n sin theta and similarly cos theta is lm by ln so this component is cos theta what about this component the one which is acting here now mg is acting in this way in this direction so this component will be mg cos theta so how i can say that i can draw a perpendicular on this so i have explained you the component that you have to find out on that you draw perpendicular so for this cos theta will be this upon this and what is this component that is mg so this component will be mg cos theta so this n will be equal to mg cos theta so if these two are balanced the car will neither move in this direction or this way this clear it will not move in this way similarly the car is here now it want skid in this direction in this way and what provides the necessary centripetal force so centripetal force is acting where inward what actually happens when a car moves in a circular path so there will be some force acting on this car and that is given by mv square by r that is the centrifugal force only so that centrifugal force is counterbalanced by the centripetal force acting where inward so this is the circular track the car is going in this way this is our car so there will be some force which will try to throw this car outward and this force is nothing but the centripetal force sorry centrifugal force this centrifugal force is counterbalanced by some force which is acting to the center of this circular arc so this is somewhat like a arc only you can see this so this arc has some center here so that force will be acting towards the center of this circular arc and that force is centripetal force so we'll see now we'll see the equilibrium conditions of this car or body on an inclined plane then only the car can move safely on an inclined plane without skidding on this inclined plane so let us analyze the how we can do this so first of all i'll balance all the horizontal forces
acting on the curve so mv square by r this is the necessary centripetal force which will keep this car moving in circular path without the car going out of the circular track so this is the centripetal force where it is acting inward I explained you here it is acting inward to the center of the circular arc and this force is provided by the components you can see what are the components which are acting inward one is this fs cos theta this is the component which is acting inward there is one more force acting inward n sin theta so i can write here n sin theta plus fs cos theta you get this equation so i'll explain you what is fs and how we can relate it with coefficient of static friction and the normal reaction now we'll counterbalance the vertical forces acting on the car so we are just uh, balancing or equating the equilibrium condition so that the car can move safely on this bank road now see what are the forces acting in vertical direction you can see here one is this mg acting downward there is one more force acting in upward direction that is this n cos theta there is one more force acting downward which is provided by which is a component of fs and that is fs sin theta so there are two forces acting in downward direction one is fs sin theta other is mg and these two forces they are counterbalanced by this component of normal reaction that is n cos theta this clear so i'll equate mg plus fs sin theta this must be equal to n cos theta so these are the two things that we'll get here now there is one more thing i want to discuss here what is fs fs is static force of friction this must always be less than or equal to mu sn this condition you have to remember now how we get this you can see here these are the car tires so when the car moves in circular path there is some force which is acting in inward direction the car will what happens when it moves in circular path this i explained you there is some centrifugal force that is equal to the centripetal force only if it keeps on moving in circular path that is mv square by r so this centrifugal force is counterbalanced by this force of friction which is acting between the tire and the ground and where it is acting in this direction it is given by fs and this fs is equal to mu sn this fs is equal to mu sn now what we are saying so what is providing this centripetal force inward or preventing this centrifugal force from taking this car out from the circular path that is your fs so i am saying here mv square by r this must be less than or equal to mu sn means this centrifugal force which is acting outward this must be less than or equal to this mu sn the static force of friction acting between the tire and the road in inward direction when these two forces will be counterbalanced so this force need to be always less than this force this is what i am saying centrifugal force it must always be less than or equal to mu sn this clear if what if if this is more then this will no longer move in this circular path 
so if you are going you might have seen sometimes what happens when the train goes with a higher speed in uh, in a circular path since the centrifugal force is much more as compared to the this fs the static force of friction which is acting between the wheels of the train and the rail track then what happens derailment it undergoes derailing so this is somewhat situ similar situation so for maximum speed fs must be equal to mu sn this is the condition means the centrifugal force will be exactly equal to the static force of friction this clear so we get this equation now put the values of this fs in this equation 1 and in equation 2 so putting the values of fs in equation 1 and equation 2 so if you put the values you get mv square by r is equal to n sin theta plus mu sn cos theta this is the same first equation only i have just uh, substituted the value of this fs in this first equation similarly when you put it for this equation second equation you get mu sn sin theta this is equal to n cos theta so this is our second equation now this equation i can write mg equal to n cos theta minus mu sn sin theta taking n common we get cos theta minus mu s sin theta that is equal to m mg or n will be equal to mg upon cos theta minus mu s sin theta let me call this as equation 4 this was 3 so equation 4 now what we'll do we'll put this value here in this equation in equation 1 so I can write putting the values of n from equation 4 in equation 1. So we will get mv square by r equal to, you can see here, I can take n common in this equation. So n outside I can take sin theta plus mu s cos theta. Now when you substitute the value of n in this, we get mv square by r equal to mg upon cos theta minus mu s sin theta and over here we have sin theta plus mu s cos theta. Is clear? So mm gets cancelled. So what do you get? v square equal to rg sin theta plus mu s cos theta. I can take cos theta outside from denominator. In denominator cos theta will be equal to 1 minus mu s. Then I have to divide this by cos theta. So this is simple calculation we are doing. What is R here? R is extend you. R is this 
radius of this this is r the radius of this circular path so any arc it will have some center so that is the radius basically distance so we get this so v square this will be equal to rg now divide this whole by cos theta so this will become tan theta plus mu s this gets cancelled upon 1 minus mu s tan theta so this is what we get here so we get v square equal to rg tan theta plus mu s upon 1 minus mu s tan theta so let me call this as equation 5 so this this will be the v max which is equal to rg mu s plus tan theta divided by 1 minus mu s tan theta so this should be the maximum velocity on an inclined plane of, of a vehicle now There is one more condition we can uh, look for if mu s is equal to 0. So mu s is equal to 0 means if the surface is completely smooth. Means there is no coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road mu s equal to 0 then in that case this v square will become equal to rg tan theta so this will become 0 again in the denominator so you'll get rg this will become 0 so tan theta or you get v this is equal to rg tan theta whole raised to 1 by 2 so this is what we get for a completely smooth surface v equal to rg tan theta raised to 1 by 2 so this is how we can uh, find out the maximum velocity of an of any object moving in a circular path on an inclined plane so a quick uh, review of the things what we covered here in this lecture so we discussed about this object moving on an inclined plane angle theta we resolved uh, these all forces into different components then what we did we equated the forces which are responsible for the necessary centripetal force and the forces which are responsible for these vertical equilibrium so these are the forces mg fs sin theta and for centripetal we took these forces and we equated them So the horizontal force acting on the car we took mb square by r which will keep this car moving in a circular path without moving away from the circular path so mb square by r is equal to n sin theta plus this similarly the vertical forces we balanced n cos theta that must be equal to mg plus fs sin theta we took this equation also fs 
this must be less than or equal to mu s n so i explained you f s is nothing but the this is equal to the centrifugal force which is acting outward and this is counterbalanced by the static force of friction f s which is acting in inward direction so this must be less than or equal to mu s n and for maximum speed f s must be equal to mu s n means the centrifugal force must be completely counterbalanced by the static force of friction between the tire and the surface so we equated these equations and uh, we calculated the value of n from these equations we got mg upon this then substituted the value of this n in our this equation mg upon this so we substituted the value of n that is mg upon this then taking cos theta common from here and then dividing this numerator by cos theta so you get rg tan theta plus mu s upon 1 minus mu s tan theta so this is the maximum velocity of any vehicle on a bank road and then we took this condition also if mu s is equal to 0 means if the surface is completely smooth then v square will be equal to rg tan theta or v will be equal to rg tan theta whole raised to 1 by 2 so we'll do this much uh, in this uh, lecture so i've already put up uh, around seven lectures uh, on my channel stats and physics concepts by mr hemant so you can uh, look at those lectures and if you find any difficulty so you may please contact me here you may approach me on this at this email id and put up your doubts okay so with this we'll end up here so you, you may please uh, subscribe to, to my channel also so that uh, whenever I will be coming up with uh, more of new topics uh, in physics. Or